Good morning and welcome to Mission Control Houston and Space Station Live. The uh, Expedition 36 crew has a full agenda planned for the day, with the new Progress 52 having launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at 3.45 p.m. Central on Saturday. And then the Progress docked then to the Piers docking compartment at 9.26 p.m. Central Time that night. Following uh, that launch and docking, Russian crew members were able to get the, do uh, the hatches between the two vehicles open on Sunday and have now begun working hard to be begin unpacking the almost three tons of food, fuel, supplies, and experiment hardware that it delivered. Included in that was some tools and spare parts needed to troubleshoot the space suit that gave Luca Parmitano trouble during his spacewalk with Chris Cassidy on July 16th. Team members here on the ground are still working through their analysis of the root cause of the water leak that caused the water to begin building up in Parmitano's spacesuit. A second round of troubleshooting was completed with the crew on Friday, and a team is now assessing the results and next steps for the troubleshooting this week. Meanwhile, the flight control team in Europe is working through a problem with the data processing units on the Albert Einstein Automated Transfer Vehicle 4 docked to the end of the Vesda service module. The vehicle has three data processing units, and one was isolated from the rest of the system after a telemetry issue was detected early last week. Then on Sunday, another data processing unit developed a similar problem and was also isolated. The ATV can function on just one data processing unit, however, a second is needed for it to stay at the space station for redundancy. So engineers here on the ground are working to uh, reset the computers and get them reintegrated into the larger system. In the midst of this, the crew is also getting ready for a third visiting vehicle, Japan's Konatori H2 Transfer Vehicle Number 4. It's going to launch from the Tanegashima Space Center in Japan at 2.48 p.m. Central Time on Saturday and birth the morning of August 9th. It will be brought in for the birthing by the space station's robotic arm, driven by Karen Nyberg and Chris Cassidy with help from Luca Parmitano, and they're brushing up on their skills for that activity today with some time at the robotic workstation inside of the cupola. On top of all that, all six members of the crew are involved in a variety of experiments looking at astronauts' diet, reaction time, and vision on orbit, as well as liquid transportation and microgravity, dynamic loads on the space station's joints, and biomass production using a bioreactor.